Greetings in the name of the Most High, Yahshua, Jesus the Lord, One, Yahweh, Elohim, God, Maker of all things, makes all things new, and in real reality, all things are new. All things are new all the time. Nothing is not new. Imagine that for a second. In the kingdom of God, in the realm of the throne of God, uh, all things are new. The Lord lights the way, the Lamb is the light, so you are the light. You are the light because there is no separation between the throne of God, between the the Lamb and you. So it really is quite a thing. And and it's hard for, you know, a lot of people are not interested because they feel that would constitute a loss of individuality. We've talked about the singularity. A man trying to merge his mind with machine with computer, with uh, artificial intelligence to become a super being. No such thing. The minute the man uh, transcends the robot, uh, man is dead. That man is, that man is dead. In other words, whatever lives is like an avatar of the guy that used to be. you know. Uh, but that person that was no longer is, and they believe that that's ridiculous, that what a man is is his mind. We could just download that mind into that machine. We live eternally. But the other thing you forget is this dimensional realm we're in is a a prison of sorts. In other words, it's not really... um, But Well, look at it this way. Let's say you're eternal here or you're like... And you have no access to anything else. No access to make all things new. No access to the new Jerusalem. No access to the throne of God. You're stuck here eternal and you and you have to keep watching every generation die and live okay after a while you would say gosh being a machine is not where it's at i really or you know a biological machine or a nano machine or whatever i really need to i want to end this i just can't take it i i realize now this is a prison yeah It's not a prison so much for the the things that cycle in and out of life and death. They cycle in and out of life and death in kind of an eternal, seemingly eternal cycle. But it's not eternal. But seemingly eternal. And one only has so much time to live and die. And even if people marvel over you, say you're a celebrity, wow, you really really hit it big. You really did it. Uh, In the end... The non-achiever and the achiever alike are equal in death. Uh, It's a great equalizer. It doesn't matter at that point what you achieved or didn't achieve. In fact, most achievers go, why didn't I just take it easy and really see what life was all about and just kind of um, be led by the spirit rather than led by the nose. In other words, by having other people dictate what my time will be. You know, uh, to where I spent all these years achieving the gold medal only to find out that I really would have liked to have spent those years doing something else where I really don't feel free or I really feel like my whole life is plotted out for me and I don't feel like I'm really here living. You hear that a lot. And then that becomes a source of drugs and, you know, all kind of malaise that people go through, you have a very regimented life, but you're very successful, and then, and then the guy commits suicide. I mean, we've seen that quite a bit. And it's because, on the one hand, they feel they wasted their lives, but they can't tell anyone that because they got a gold medal and they got millions of dollars, and so they can't ever utter a word of complaint. And if they start thinking about their situation... All the handlers and controllers are going to tell her, oh, no, you did the right thing. Oh, you've had a blessed life. Oh, you're so important. People really look up to you. 
Uh, it's really great what you're doing with the kids' charity now and the, all the extensions of that Glory Day youth. You, it's, it's so wonderful. I mean, how could you think you don't have a blessed life and look, you're making a huge difference? I mean, your life is good. Look at these other people. They don't have anything near what you've got. <laughs> so they sort of guilt trip him back into silence. So those concerns and sorrows within that man or woman never really get addressed. Their life is basically scripted. Because to get the gold medal, you know, uh, they start them off as kids. And um, they never really have a say in it because as kids you don't really have a say. So they start them off as kids. And basically it's just that strict regimen from then on forward. It may be the father's dream or the coach's dream. It may not even be in that person's head or, or heart that they want to compete for a gold medal or whatever it is. And um, so many people, in other words, don't live because basically that, what I just described to you is a slave. That's a slave. So when we're talking about this slavery, and then there's the, the you know, we talk about the spiritual level slaves where people are just, you know, sort of have a need to um, bow down to one another in order to feel a sense of comfort, in order to feel a sense of um, sustainability or whatever. And I'm here to tell you that none of us have any sustainability. And it may be hard to go it alone and do your bliss because, I mean, other people may, you know, feel like, you know, you don't care about them or whatever because you're leading your own life. But it's by far the healthier thing to do than, um, you know, it, it all needs to be kept in check. And that's just kind of like where I'm at with, uh, I do projects and I do them on an individual basis with no, with nothing afterwards because, you know, I just don't know what's going to happen or where I'm going to be taken. And, and uh, I, I like to do projects like CD projects and getting into video now and all that, and um, on an individual project basis, a project album, let's say, and then another thing that might be totally different, or another artist that might be totally different. So um, what I've chosen, the path I've chosen, affords me a lot of, um, no, no one pushed me into it, I just, I'm doing what I want to do, so, but, but it affords me different, um, you know, options, and, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the other thing is, of course, without worldly connections, there's not too much hope of success. In fact, the odds are probably about a thousand to one that I, that whatever projects I do, no matter how hard I work, no matter what I achieve, uh, they will go unnoticed. You know, just because that's the nature of the beast. The nature of the beast is... You want things to happen, it's a people business, then you have to become one of them. Well, my entire ministry, if you will, my walk, the, the, the music and the words are equal. They, they, they speak the same truth. And because of that, I, that choice, I realize, well, it's pleasing to the Lord. But it irks people. Especially because they don't want to be woken up. So every lyric, pretty much every song, including praise songs, everything that glorifies him, everything that speaks truth and brings a sword out in a, in a loud volume with a, with a hard beat, the Lord loves it. I think he especially like my song, Lizards. Just taking no prisoners. Or anything that I do. Because see, where I'm coming from is going to always be that position. And that position is not going to be acceptable to the world shit stem, which I could care less because what is that? I mean, pathetic, right? It is pathetic. I saw this, uh, speaking of pathetic, of a guy that's totally connected. I was at the movies, I saw White House Down last night, and I just have to share this with you. 
when there was a commercial, like, you know how they have that first look thing going before the movie? And uh, before the, uh, the trailers come up, before 25 minutes of trailers, which is kind of a drag if you've seen them. But uh, so Jay-Z pops up with his new album, Magna Carta, and it's got this little jam kind of commercial thing. And it's just like, uh, you know, a typical hip-hop scene. You've got the mixing board is the instrument, right? Sampling, right? And Jay-Z and his engineer, and, and, and he's, you know, it's just a, a little commercial that's going out in all the theaters across the country. See, that's connected. And then what he'll sing about or rap about is, um, who knows? I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, he's going to do his thing and people can relate to it and that's good. Someone told me the other day, you've got to do music that people can relate to. I said, I do. Absolutely. Same concepts here are, are in that. Um, but I don't expect the same kind of treatment as um, a Jay-Z. <laughs> uh, it's a, suffice to say, it's a specialty thing. Whether it's a, a beautiful praise album like Sword and Dove, or whether it's, it's the harsh reality of our situation, uh, a la Death Camp Parade, two projects I'm involved in. And um, so, if you feel likewise, check it out. I realized, you know, all the lyrics I write, I don't think, um, and I'm doing more and more, more and more lyric writing, more and more, I'm more and more interested in, uh, in going forth as a, developing my, uh, the Z Sonica thing. I think that's kind of what's, what's next. I mean, it's going to eventually be integrated with this show, and then this show will be, it'll all be part and parcel, kind of like how it was growing a few years ago, it's going to become more sort of a solid thing. And, uh, and so, like I say, in terms of, um, I just, probably the next year I'll be focusing a lot on, on this, this journey with my microphone. That's what I'm interested in now. Because this journey with the microphone, I have a microphone right here. When I went to a, uh, I went to this Sweetwater thing, I have all the gear and whatnot. It was like I'm going to Disneyland. It was circus tents galore and lots of really interesting people and great musicians. And just it was like a couple of days of just a real intense, you know, if you're after gear or you want to see what's going on, that's, that's sort of like a, actually it's bigger than the NAM thing in Vegas or wherever they have it, Anaheim or wherever it is. And, uh, which is a trade show. This is not a trade show, but it's huge. Anyway, so we went there, and I met this guy. We were because I was saving his seat. We were watching uh, uh, Terry Bozio playing drums and on his massive kit that was set up there. And so I, no one wanted to leave their seat because we were right in the center. So he represented this mic company, and um, and he swore by this mic. They have a new mic that's. Uh, they people know that when I produce my own tracks or when I'm in the driver's seat with a mic, which is where I, I pretty much am kind of going that direction more and more. So when I'm in that position, I only use a handheld mic. I just realize that that's when I'm working out lyrics or working out anything. It's kind of like a, like the hip hop guys. I like a handheld mic, but a lot of those guys in the studio they have a they have a mic on a stand and they have their poetry or whatever their rap written out in a right because a lot of times it's a big complex rap with a lot you know on two pages <laughs> single spaced so they got to refer to it you know and eventually after you rehearse it enough you get it but when it's first coming in the studio you so so they can't really have a handheld mic until later well anyway so this one was Swore that, and I said I like to get right up on the mic and overmodulate it, and that's why I have a. I've got some good mics. I have like a uh, a mic by Neumann that's a handheld, uh, supposedly a live stage mic, and I and every time I get near it, I seem to crap it out. So that was kind of a waste. I've got the 58s 
58 beta, that's good, but then you need a really good preamp to bring out, you know, the sound you want, which you can do. I mean, you can definitely just stick with that. And then I found this other one that's a brand new mic that uh, handheld. He said you could put it up next to a jet engine, it wouldn't crap. I mean, you can, you can get right up on it and scream to the top of your lungs, and it would be a smooth signal. In other words, what you record will, will still be not clipped and smooth. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So anyway, I tried it out yesterday, and I, I, absolutely, that's probably, you know, I finally found the thing made for me, because sometimes I just have to scream. Okay, so enough of a small talk. The times we're in are very, um, very difficult, and um, the, the, the good news about them is they're very surprising. They're very difficult and they're very surprising. The surprising part is what seems to get us through the day. In other words, there's some new awful level that we reach on almost a daily basis. And as I was telling someone yesterday, and this is going with our theme all week, and what I'm going to do is put all these podcasts up for the whole week, unedited, even though there's some probably stuff I shouldn't even be talking about, you know, just personal stuff, but I'll put it up there. I don't care. It's time to just flaunt whatever you got. Time to stand naked before God. Anyway, I was encouraging this, this, this young man, you know, because I have a daughter and I have a son, but if I have a son, I'm going to tell him this. Look, the one thing I can tell you about living this life is not to become somebody's slave. Because the moment you do that, is the moment your life ends and their life extends through you. It's just almost like this sort of code, codependent way of power in life from somebody else. And, you know, um, you know, batteries tend to be used up and then tossed out when they're no longer of use. Further to that, the slaver does not respect the slavee because the slavee is showing weakness in wanting to be in that position and willing to take guff orders, you know, instruction as gospel, or plan their lives according to someone else's plans. Just like what we started off talking about, about this, apparently this is really on my heart, so this is what is going on out there, I'm sure with some people. To the extent that you live an authentic life and I'll just say another thing. Most people are right on the verge, right on the line of falling in because the entire world system of Babylon, the entire Babylonian world system, the whole thing is based on slavery. And, you know, you have contact points of human beings in various organizations and guilds and, and jobs and things who are waiting to... And they want you because they want the power that you're going to give them. So when you become their employee, they feel like what they really want is to own you, but they want to have to, it to, you to be an extension of them, if that makes sense. And then that gives them more life and you less. But what you get is you don't have to think. And no man can tolerate that. The reason that's in us to do because the whole society is based on that. So the reason that's in us to do is because of the compromised DNA. And, you know, I, you hear a lot of people talking about that, but there's also a spiritual component to DNA that is, goes beyond this time and space. And um, so the real you wants to be free, and the price, of course, is loneliness, lack of direction, um, what other people may call foolishness, uh, idleness, uh, a lack of purpose, a lack of direction. Certainly, we don't see that with most Christian churches. It's all rah rah, like a like a multi level marketing, you know, like an Amway uh, gathering. And it's like <laughs> that's completely the opposite. It seems that church. And religion in general is completely the opposite 
of what Jesus taught, like a 180 degree opposite. Oh, they may have, you know, take care of the poor and whatnot, and that's great. But in terms of what they do to souls, they gather souls to feed, the, and, the, and the, the gathering or the hive feeds off that next new soul and needs more. Because that's what gives it life, rather than the Lord God directly giving life to his people. Rather than the light being the lamb, the light is other people. And that is the condition that we are all in, of which Jesus comes to liberate us from that situation. So anyone claiming Jesus but being in that situation does not have Jesus, never was saved, never did walk that walk, not one day in his life. Has no connection to the Lord whatsoever. And many of these are putting on conferences. Somebody... A friend of mine just sent me a, a conference of people that I used to know, used to interview. And I'm like, oh, man. And she keeps sending me these. <laughs> uh, like, I'm always amazed at the next conference. And I'm like, do these people now they're being totally conned or what? You know, I thought we went through that on the Zeph Report. So welcome to the Zeph Report. This is Zeph Daniel, your host. This is Zed Ja. The producer, Zef Daniel, the person. And we're going into, a, you know, this, this show is going to morph because uh, it's going to become part and parcel with the, uh, the Zedja Studio, the Karova Media thing that we haven't really launched yet, but that's uh, all happening. It's all going to become kind of connected. It's really just all one big prophetic walk and people that come in and go out and whatever, they're all part of this prophetic walk. There's this sort of prophetic thing going on. And I think that's what we do. And that's why the Lord won't let me quit. <laughs> I heard an amen back there. It's like 4.30 in the morning. But yeah, the casualness of, uh, you know. See, a lot of the times, I'll get to you, I'll come to you in the... The first consciousness, first light, where I just am kind of hitting it with first cup of coffee or espresso here and trying to, not even knowing what the day is really happening, just the, the blurriness in my eyes still there. And the mic gets flipped on. So you get it, you get that download immediately. And, uh, but we're also going to be broadcasting from the studio. And uh, there are some other voices out there that I need to be talking to that you will hear. The, the reason I have an interview, quite frankly, is because um, nobody's really dealing with what I'm dealing with is why. No one seems to be tuned in to the vibe. See, I kind of, I don't argue with God. You know what I mean? I just get up, get the mic, and go. Whatever it is, Lord, I'll just do it. Whatever is on your heart, which lately has been slavery. And interestingly enough, as I flip around the dial, I hear people like Alex Jones talking about it, but in a way... And now I'm not a big listener of his. I just, uh, sometimes it's on in the background or whatever. And uh, just like, you know, the other talk show hosts, Rush Limbaugh, and every once in a while. Well, I used to listen to leftists as well until they just got psycho for Obama. I mean, it was just like, oh, he's black. Let's worship him. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, this is going to, anyone who doesn't worship Obama is a racist. I'm like, okay, that's it. Okay, you're out of here, you know. But yeah, sometimes it's on the background. I don't listen too much because I don't, I can't afford to get bummed out because I'm in the studio and it's really hard work <clears throat> coming up with songs and lyrics and things. It's just really hard. It's uh, physically hard, mentally hard, spiritually hard. My heart goes out to all of you who are creators and I'm hoping to help. I can't, I wish I was five people so I could help all the people that I see need real producing help, which like 90% of it is engineering. They need engineering skills. When I hear your mixes out there, you need me. You don't know it because your ears aren't there yet. But you need, if you ever want to go to another level, you're going to need the actual, your demos to be um, commensurate with what's, they won't even touch it. I mean, I know how it is on the other side when they're looking at YouTubes to find out artists they want to put on a label 
um, they say, well, your demo doesn't matter. You can be crazy. Well, if you're a personality and you're crazy, you can just go ahead and play to your video camera and overmodulate it, and they don't care. They'll, they'll produce you because you're crazy and you're kind of hip and you're cool, and they're going to want to be involved with you. But if you're just going out there as, a, as music, if it's not engineered right, the emotion doesn't come through. Ask some of the artists I work with, when you guys have put up uh, your tracks not produced, what was the reaction? No, it won't, there won't be any reaction because no matter how emotional the piece is, without it being produced, it can't produce, reproduce that emotion in the other person. That's why when I mix, I'm always mixing for what? Emotion. Not necessarily technical perfection. I'm going, I want emotion. And obviously, you know, you can't put in what God left out. So if, if, uh, if in any kind of production you don't have something really inspiring in it, then it's, no matter how much you polish it, it won't. It's, it's like when Van Halen got Sammy Hagar, it's like, well, not that I was, I'm a Van Halen guitar fan, but not necessarily a big fan of the band because I'm not really a party band guy. But when that happened, it was like, oh, you think, oh, that'd be a great band. And it was okay. And they had, you know, of course they were guaranteed some hits because they're all rock stars. But um, it, to me, that was just, you know, uninspiring. That just didn't work. And then eventually it broke up. But I mean, it didn't, it didn't work because it just wasn't that, whatever that thing was. So not that it's a great comparison and not that I should be digressing into all this, but uh, this is what the Lord has on my heart about slavery. Being a maverick, being a maverick in the studio. In other words, I'm producing lyrics and, and you know, if you want to even match me, in lyrics, you're going to have to start writing tough. You got to start being tougher. You'd, this is a war. I'm interested in doing theatrics, theatrical stuff, sound, sonic, entertainment. <clears throat> that is, you, you know, that is multi-level. That is uncompromising. And. Uh, my friend was saying, well, you, you want to be popular, you got to do something people can relate to. And I go, I already do. And I'm not changing. In fact, I'm going to double down, triple down on exactly the path I'm going. And I'm going to say to rock stars out there, why don't you guys start writing about something? I can take a huge swath and just say, you know, I've looked at all the metal lyrics. I've looked at all the rock lyrics. I've looked at everything over the last few years. And so that definitely inspires me to go because nobody's doing what we're doing. Nobody, not even close. Not even distantly close. So I know we're on to something. Because nothing is more important than to break the mirror of slavery. And that's the purpose of sound. And that's the purpose of my studio. And that's the purpose of these talks is to break down this mirror. To break down this trance. To break down this hypnosis to break down this delusion, to break down this matrix, to break down this false paradigm, to break down this lie that you're free when you're a slave, like the Beatles would prom promote slavery. Well, I mean, it was, I, I believe they were innocent kind of when they were doing it, but, you know, um, they had a lot of money behind them for just the message that they were putting out, which is to join the Magical Mystery Slave Tour. And... Um, Conform to the to the shitestum. I know I make myself so radio unready, but the shitestum. You, you conform to the shitestum. We'll call it that. The shitestum, like shyster and system. Conform to the shitestum. Very German. Ask the shitestum here, Herr Daniel. The shitestum. Talk about the shitestum. You got it. So by conforming to the shitestum. Somehow they are free, according to, to these, you know, to so many um, rock stars. And I'm here to tell you that the minute you're owned and operated by, your life ends on that moment. Which is why Jerry Garcia called himself the Grateful Dead. He was grateful to be in that situation because it meant... 
people will listen to their music. I'm going to just fully rely on God for any kind of listeners. And I mean, I've abused you guys. I mean, I haven't been around. I've been working hard in the studio, 12, 15-hour days at times, sometimes normal eight-hour days, but just exhausted, you know. And in a good way, in a good way. It's all good. But, uh, and it hasn't been that I haven't been doing these. I've been doing these, and I have, I, I have so many. That's why we're doing kind of a recap right now, because I don't know how many hours. I might be six or eight hours that I'm going to drop right after this little talk here, which will be just a short, this is kind of like a housekeeping sort of talk. And um, I'm also reminded of the prophets of old. The prophets of old prophesying to the king. And we'll just have to do it from here, you know, via the uh, CIA or NSA or whoever listens to these things. Um, If Obama... Uh, well, let me, okay, I'm going to stop that. I'll lay that on you in a minute. It's a hard war, and however you do it, I'd always been a poet. In other words, when I was, I just got some more personal testimony here before you give you that thing. So I, writing had always kind of pulled me through, and I was always writing poetry and lyrics, and, you know, I got kind of known for that when I was a kid. And um, I'm returning to that now. It's amazing. I could write long, long things. I just feel like, in a way, I just don't even want to communicate in rational paragraphs anymore or punctuation. I want to do it differently, you know? And I want to do it prophetically, spiritually, inspired by the nonlinear force of God. The nonlinear force. And when I say Jesus... Gosh, I mean so much more than the sort of anglicized Jesus you see plastered all over Facebook. I mean so much more. You know, we are Christ as one. He and I and the Lord God and all of it is one. We speak with one voice. We have but one purpose. Coming to earth was, you know, the, he sent me here because, and others, and you perhaps, because basically to speak to the situation, to prophesy about the things to come, which is no, no use prophesying in a predictive fashion because everything that we predicted, save for nuclear war, has already occurred. I mean... Okay, a total lockdown, the prison camps, and nuclear war, whatever, mass death, etc. All the things people are screaming about now, we talked about in 2002. Re- vain repetitions of your prophetic words are stupid. It just needs to be uttered once. And we've done vain repetitions here too, and I repent, Lord. You know, or things like, see, I predicted it, and it happened. You see? You know what I mean? And, it's, and there's been so many things like that. It'd be, it's useless to start in if there's a different relationship since there's not time and space and future and past. If I utter it, it will happen. And some people have gone on to that. Like I had a talk with somebody the other day. I was saying, oh, I'm feeling old. And they go, Don't speak that because, see, when you speak something, it comes into existence. It's like, there's, there's some truth to that. There really is. But with God's prophets... They can they go, well, gosh, that's accurate. It's because when they spoke it, it was the Lord told them to speak it as he was bringing it into existence, but it already was written from the very beginning. See, without time and space, it gets very confusing. What came first, the chicken or the egg? The prophetic utterance or God's moving? Is he predicting something? Well, he's uttering something that's already been written, and it was written for him to utter it at the time he uttered it so that people would be warned and then not heed and then... The plague came and wiped them out. And the chemtrails came and wiped them out. And the financial collapse came and wiped them out. And the newspapers went down and Babylon fell. And they all warned all the prophets from the very beginning, from Enoch, Elijah, and all through John the Baptist and 
all the apostles and uh, the various churches that were upright through time and space since then and who eschewed their corruption received prophetic words that they could give to the world. And that is, um, you know, like the book of Daniel, knowledge will be greatly increased. People talking about all these issues. Um, but they lose the focus. What good is it talking about the hybridization, which, by the way, has been going on for thousands of years, and there's a spiritual component. If you corrupt yourself into the shizdom, you will become like one of them, a lizard. We call that euphemistically a lizard, but it's some of them are actually more insect than lizard, you know, if you've seen some of these beings. But whatever they are, they're, they... And some of these started out as human from a prior civilization and they became like insects and miserable. So they need the human genome to cull DNA to try to fix their problem, which they can never fix. It's, it's making a bargain with the devil that's like being in hell and conscious of it forever. That's where it leads. All bargains with the devil lead to hell and hell on earth. Hell on earth. The earth is going to burn this next time through through nuclear war and everything else, and they're conditioning you with movies, movies about the White House being taken down, movies and all these shows uh, of uh, totalitarian regime, the World War Z, White House down, um, a future, you know, after Earth, you know, a future without humans. All these are Luciferian plans. All these so-called, oh, the Lord told me to tell you a word. All environmentalists hurt the environment. I know that sounds like something you'd already figured out. I understand that. But it was a confirmation. He said that to be environmentalist means you hurt the earth and hurt the people. That's your job. Your job is to hurt them in the name of helping you hurt. And that's what all Satan's jobs are. In the name of being president, you betray the country. In the name of a war on drugs and poverty, you create more poverty because that's your, and more drugs because that's your voting base. Because that's your, the, right? So it all, all this corruption leads to the real game of Lucifer, which is collapse of civilization and massive destruction of human life and especially human happiness and um, a sense of being fulfilled, a sense of family and you know, goodness and, you know, morals and being straight with the other guy and not demanding him be a slave of you or you a slave of him. And I mean, I can understand if you guys are not on the same page, like some of you like to have weird sex and then the other guy doesn't. It's hard to be friends. You know, that sort of thing. Well, you're just going to have to grow up and get over that. You, you know, um, it's my belief... I'm just saying things that are popping in, folks. I, I, there's no script here. This is God's script. I, I can't. I have no power to to fight it. Uh, a lot of people are really proud of themselves when they finally go gay. It's like, oh wow, I really crossed that border, or then they 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 join an orgy. Oh wow, I really crossed that. I was so hung up, and now I'm really so free. You know, that's sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Um, uh, a place where there's no, no room for celibacy. In other words, s sex in rock and roll culture and in culture, not just rock and roll, but I mean, rock and roll is very conformity-oriented. It's run by, the, by Wall Street in three-piece suits. And um, the rock stars they put in front of you look like all these creative kind of dudes where they're just like marionettes. Sorry, I'm just saying what it is. Anybody who's in that position knows I'm right. I'm not saying it to be mean to you. I'm just saying that that's what it is. It's a circus. It's an act. So you think, wow, be wild and free. The whole purpose of the suits bringing you in like that is so that they can sexualize you and have access to you as children. And so you will then participate in the what? Slave system, correct. They get you with, uh, with sex. That's one way they do it. Meaning... If you're not going to, uh, if you're not going to get down with what's going on, get the hell out. You know, it's like you either join us, join in, or or get out. I said they're having like a couples having sex in this like motorcycle show, and 
this guy wanders in and he's like staring at him and the woman go, laughs and goes, hey, either join or get out. Exactly. But in joining, you know, that becomes like this symbolic aspect of slavery because without that vetting process of everyone being down with the program, then others are pushed out because they're not participating. Hence, participating equals bowing down, which then through the sexual uh, self-corruption e eventuates in a spiritual slavery and corruption, which is a hive mind group think lizard teen type of thing where the people are really culled and gathered into slave quarters which is why I've always advocated when they want you to take a tumble tell them to F off you'll take a tumble when you damn well feel like it maybe you'll do it 10 minutes from now but you're not going to be at the behest of them and their silly orders or what it really is is a thin veil of slavery, we're all a hive. And they're gonna to wanna to siphon off the all the all the stuff they can off of you and use you, and that's the entry in. They'll give you free sex in exchange, you know, which and hopefully you'll become addicted in illicit sex and illegal sex, so you can be blackmailed, so that they can get what's in you. And then it's all going to be couched under this, hey, we're just partying. Well, if you're just partying and it's just sex and it's just mutual consent, why do people wind up dead? Oh, <laughs> I see. Why do they wind up dead? Uh, why do they, why they, they'll talk about, you know, all kinds of things, but never about that, never about this spiritual, psychosexual soul connection, uh, destruction, slavery, whatever. Without which, they'll say, you can't make it by in this world. Oh, really? Well, that would make the entire thing a pedophile operation, wouldn't it? That's illegal. <laughs> well, not in all countries, but I'm just saying. So they're not talking about it. Um, people are dying about it, like the song Spoonful says. It's on and on and on and on. You know, over fighting over this power is what's being fought over. And this power to force people to conform in exchange for the trinkets of the world, which ends up being not only slavery, but it makes you as if you never were. And in the end, your death is meaningless because no matter what you did or didn't do is irrelevant on the day of your death. Um, but if you are already dead, and everyone in that system is already dead, um, then there's no point. Your death will be the end of you anyway. It won't even, it'll be more like this. In spiritual terms, you will be as if you never were in the first place. In other terms, you could say, well, what about burning in hell? Yeah, the twice dead burn in hell. That's right. I've, I've often put it both ways. I said, yes, it's as if you never were and you're burning in hell, but then again, I'm not conscious of it. Why? Because in the New Jerusalem, nothing like that has ever taken place. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so impossible to describe real reality to you that I have to do it in other ways. Let's just put it this way. This entire lizard teen force that has a, that's pushing people down, forcing them to conform, wanting them to be dead, to be twice dead, to be slaves, wanting to put trinkets in front of them, they ask if you corrupt yourself a little more, start doing our bidding, you will go up the ladder. So it starts with something like giving you some free sex, a little bit of power while you're being fed off of. Then you realize for me to survive, for me to be, I got to find someone else to get control of so I can feed off them. Hence the dragon is breathing in and out. Okay, breathe. As Pink Floyd says, breathe in the air, don't care. That's right. The whole organism breathes and exhales at the same time. You are simply been um, depersonalized. And then, of course, the sorrow that comes later in your life of having a fake life from day one, being little more than a fool on the Truman Show your whole life, never done anything you wanted to do because you never knew yourself to do it in the first place. All of that 
thinking, realizing all the ideas that popped into your head for you to do weren't yours, but part of this hive, part of this breathing in and out mechanism. In other words, from childhood on, your life was canceled. And any poet, any artist, any musician, I don't care who you are, your job is truth, right? That's why they get killed at 27, because they start getting to the truth, and then, uh-oh, they violated the terms of their contract. They're out of here, right? I think everyone's real spooky stuff. Well, I mean, I've always had a lot of weird deaths around me. Weird deaths to which I'd be told, oh, don't look at that. Just forget it and go on. Yeah, it all had to do with spooky Satan. Weird kind of stuff going on. People just taking out right and left, all part of the game that destroys souls. Hoping People hoping, well, I hope it doesn't happen to me. I'm going to mind my P's and Q's and I'm going to remain quietly dead, thank you, and not say a word because I don't want that to happen to me. In other words, they make examples of people all the time. All the time. You know, what, don't be a fool and throw your life away. You've already thrown your life away. The purpose of Jesus Christ is the redemption of your soul, of your life, to give it meaning, to breathe life into it, to, to give you rarefied oxygen of the Lord God himself, to sustain you as you overcome this. Everything else is unacceptable because the way of death is death. See, for me, now it's going to be twice dead. I wouldn't hang around. I'd exit. You know, that's the more honest thing to do. If you're dead anyway and your life is meaningless, there is no point in living on. Even though they do. Because they're afraid. Because they're cowards. They're, they're afraid to take a risk. In fact, as they get older, they're, they're, they would never go into combat. You know what I mean? They want other people to go die for them. But they would never risk their lives, most of these people. They, they just have been used to being cowed every day into submission. And after a whole long time of that, you know, they could see someone get killed in the street and walk right by the, right by the corpse or right by the victim and not even raise a finger to help them, not even make a cell phone call. That is someone conformed to the world and who is dead, obviously. These are people who have learned helplessness over their whole lives and will not fight for freedom. And that's why you see freedom being taken from America, where basically the, what it's going to be is the cowed people who've all fallen for this trick, and that's the majority of people in the United States, and the few elites keeping them poor, and eventually, of course, when there's war or a financial collapse or whatever, they, you, you all have to be gar gathered into camps because that's the only way the government can feed you and take care of you, the government being an extension of this sort of corporate elite, you know, Atlantean, Luciferian, uh, intergalactic kind of whatever it is that seeks to enslave all humans, destroy them, make them miserable, and then kill them. And that's the nature of Lucifer's game, not enlightenment, not the ability of reason, because the, the flaw is this Lucifer guy is unreasonable and unintelligent. Oh, he's very intelligent. Well, crafty, maybe, cunning, yes, all those kinds of skills, but in terms of the big picture, unintelligent, because in the end, he's gone. In the end, right, I, can hear, I can hear the devil talking to me now, and he's saying... Yeah, but what about me? I'm a slave to God. I shouldn't be a slave. I should rebel against that. So he's now the perfect, just like we're in a court of law. And I'm just saying that's, you know, if I'm the judge, I say, um, sorry, uh, strike that, that's irrelevant. Being a slave to the creator is like saying, because you created me, Lord, I am a slave. And I don't want to be. <laughs> and the answer would be uncreation. And then the devil is saying, you see, Zeph, that's why 
I've done everything I've done. Because uncreation is the better of the two evils, or the, not the two evils, but the two positions. Uncreation would be the answer. So if following my path leads you to uncreation, bliss! How perfect is that? In uncreation, how are you not one in all and all in one? If all reality is one in all and all reality is all in one, then by the mere fact of uncreation, or as if you never were, Obadiah, if you want to look up that scripture, of the children of Esau become uncreated, as if they never were. That's where I get that from. Uh, Obadiah, minor prophet in the Bible, look it up. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not here to do line and verse. We refer to our Bible. Our Bible's always open, but you know, if the Lord doesn't steer me over there, he, the, the thing that I think he hates more than anything else is line and verse. Even the, the biggest Satanists can do that. But, but here we go. Um, so Lucifer says, the devil says. So therefore, in uncreation, how, is, how are you any less? You're still one and all and all in one. You're still matter, form, and all the thing, everything there is, you're still part of it and it's part of you. And if you're uncreated, then it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, And I'm here to say yes, but in death, as you well know, there is no escape from judgment. There is no escape from answering for the things you've done that hurt other people. There is no escape from all those kind of karmic things. We all will reap what we sow in death and after. And then, then he says to me, yes, but you have to have faith you have to have faith to understand that. So most people don't have faith, so they sow to this world, hence they're going to want an easier time, so they're going to come with me because I'm going to give them power over other, other people, power of the purse, power of sustenance, a feeling of security, and they'll take that over walking lonely like with Jesus any day, and I'll do it in the churches, and I'll do it everywhere. You know, I'll put my mark on them, and I'll make sure, because it hurts God's ears, hear them singing about Jesus on a Sunday and bowing down to Satan on a Monday. It just irks him. And the logic is, yes, but if everybody does it, Zev, then what's the crime? It disappears. No one's going to talk. Everybody covers. So nobody makes a move. Nobody lives. Suspended animation. Human misery racks up on the earth like we've never seen as a result, a direct result of that. There is no other cause. It's, it's, it, all the external stuff and behaviors, like I hear talk show hosts talking about these days, uh, they complain about men becoming women in the households, becoming you know, slaves to the women and whatnot, and, uh, and they want to do it. And it's like, no, they've already learned that. You see? These guys, it, it, the externals don't matter. The internal corruption has already occurred to the vast majority. And so, of course, they're, you, know, you can morph them into anything you want at that point. You can become... Little women in the house while the women go out and earn the bread or whatever it is. It doesn't, these are all manifestations of the inner, of some compromise, some thing that's already been done a long time ago with Lucifer, with Satan, with the hive, with the agreement. And it leads to, let me just explain where it leads. All of that behavior, and all you rock and rollers, listen up. All of that leads to complete total destruction of all things. Society, your industry, uh, the outbreak of war. Uh, the, there's some real troubles out there, and the only reason there's been protection is because there have been enough people sowing to the Lord and not being slaves. But the minute the society gives in, there is no more reason to protect it from God's point of view. It's just like crops that don't come up. You didn't need to plow it under. It's impersonal. God's no respect your person. I mean, we personalize God and put him on a throne with a beard and all this. No, he's a force. He's a, he's a spirit. It's impersonal. He has no respect to persons. You go that way, 
the way that's offered to you and your civilization will collapse and it will be your fault. Or your industry, it will be your fault. How many people do I hear complaining, you know, about the recording industry this last couple weeks, this last week, and how it's not the same, they can't make money and they have to take any job and it's just really tough whether you're in the business of being an engineer, a producer, an artist, whatever. And the reason it's tough is because it's corrupt. It's a spiritual reason. So you see all these old bands having to get out on the road because they can't make it on CDs. That's right, they can't make it on record sales. And, and uh, the, all the rock stars are flying around in commercial airplanes. I don't see them in their private jets anymore. Gee, whatever happened to those? All that changed. And it's about to get ten times worse. Not only in, it, in, in you know, music land, but in movies and entertainment in general. It's all morphed. People who used to make a living are no longer making a living. They thought it was forever. Oh, they can still go to Vegas, I guess, but, you know, or the Indian casinos, you know, ZZ Top at the Indian casino. But, I mean, that's basically it. it uh, uh, why did it get destroyed? Well, it's just cheap. It's across the board of entertainment. And, and we, we'll, it, it's, it's, it, it's the takeover has occurred. The artists will no longer in the future be necessary. Artists will become avatars. Rock stars will become avatars. In other words, there'll be people cooking up music, say, in a studio and putting out some virtual reality uh, characters that people will fall in love with. As we go more and more virtual, we'll become more and more of a machine, nobody's going to make a living at anything. All of this is because we, as a culture, want to be slaves. We want to be taken care of. And that's how you go, well, how can everyone vote for Obama? It's because the same ethos, the same mentality, the same cultural corruption, the same internal corruption that gets you to bow your knee to the, to the devil, right? Because you don't want to be harassed, because you want to be liked. That same thing that's natural for a person to do. I mean, everyone wants to be liked and have a place and have a bar where they all go, hey, Joe, what's happening, man? How's it going? We're all in the same thing. We're all, we're all in a yellow submarine or whatever. Everybody's in the same, so we can relate. Um, the, the problem with that is that that form of slavery that seems benign leads to this, what you have now. And this is just the prelude to, you know, I'm just looking at the World War III thing. And by the way, everything I'm talking about will only reach individuals, uh, as far as the mass population, nothing I say is going to change the destruction that is to come. Now we've finally gotten to it. All of this, and I stand with the prophetic brothers of old, everything I've said is everything that's in the Bible, everything that's in Ezekiel, everything that's in Daniel, everything that's in all of them. But the missing component is faith. If you are not part of the shizdom, but you have no faith, then you might as well be. Because then you're, you, 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 without faith, you can't do anything. Hebrews 11 would be your chapter. Without faith, you can do nothing. On my own, I can do nothing. He that gives me strength, that gives me these words to speak. Otherwise, I can do nothing. The concepts that I put forth today, most people cannot talk about and will not talk about because they can't frame it conceptually. They can't see the connection between complete genocide of themselves and their race and their children and everything they hold dear and all their businesses and all their aspirations gone to dust. They can't make the connection between the internal self-corruption, i.e. belonging, and the external collapse of civilization or the contribution to the... They, they gawk and scream at the corruption and, of the NSA and all these things. It's like, no, this is, this is where it all leads. But this is all prophetic in the Bible. This is like the book of Revelation coming due. It won't be long before there's a chip necessary to chip people. Um, you know, it's all happening really fast as, as, you know, and it really does look like because of the... Prophecies of Daniel having come due. Uh, the characteristics of Obama, I will say, fit the description, not completely to a T, but um, you got to remember about regarding the Antichrist, it's a multifaceted thing. It's not just a person. 
So we have that aspect. Um, we have the World War III aspect, the specter of World War III coming. And believe me, after that, um, you people still living are going to envy the dead. And the irony of it all is it'll end up being your fault that it happened in the first place, but you won't take responsibility because you can't see the connection between yourself and World War III. That's where I come in. I'm saying there's not only is there a connection, there's a direct connection. So as the culture falls in on its own petard, as the people decide to become slaves, as they all bow down to one another in some, you know, some quivering, monstrous hive, um, the end of days looms. Will it be the ultimate end of days? Well, it may just keep going. Like I said, I suggested maybe there's another beginning and another Bible, another book of Revelation, maybe a whole other cycle starts somewhere else. God can do what he wants. The point is we're dealing with this one. This one. Oh, I know, I know. They, yeah, right, the Jason Bourne treatment. A lot of people have been traumatized in being slaves. It's really not their fault. It's really not fair. I understand um, well, then all the more reason to listen here because you might have a chance of waking up. If you wake up, taking responsibility would mean that you would extricate yourself from that situation, obviously. But since that's impossible because it's organic, it's only God that can do it. And most people don't want God. So they've already, they're already at peace with their fate. And I'm, I'm good with that. I'm the last person that will tell everybody to repent. God doesn't want to lose one. Yes, he does. He wants to lose all who are not his, and he will. That's the thing about God. He's the one that chooses you. You don't choose him, dummy. It's like, oh, I'm staying away from that. But like, like you're so precious, like you're made out of gold and can't be sold, as Jimi Hendrix said. Well, he was talking about the opposite thing, but I mean, you know, same thing applies. Oh, you're so precious, you think that God's pursuing you, so you're going to stay away from the, quote, religious people because you're so precious, God's running after you, sending people after you, but you know better? Are you effing kidding me? Do you realize what a fool that makes you? Do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? You're being pursued by God, but you're pushing him away? Like you're just too precious? Are you kidding your maker, the guy that made everything, and you go, oh, I'm pushing him away. I got my own life. What life? Everything you have is he gives you. He gives all of us everything we have. And what about all the starvation? I'm against that, so I'm not going to be doing that. And that anti-gay thing, I'm not doing that. So I'm, okay, well, can't see through the cultural biases and mistakes. That's fine. But the idea that you're so precious that you think God's following you around. I want to speak against the church right now, against all their teachings. God does not wish for everyone to be saved. Contrary to what you think TBN has told you. TBN just wants lots of money from you. So they'll say crap like that. God only wants those who are his that he chooses in his timing Meaning, you know, no guilt from you over when you finally came to the Lord. You didn't come to anything. He, he took you at the moment he was going to take you, period. You had nothing to do with it. Period, 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 period. Get it. Don't be so arrogant to think you're so precious. Now, these people are trying to really make sense to you and evangelize you. It's like, you don't, you, you prick. Sorry, I just, I can't believe that you would think that you're just so valuable. Who taught you that? Who taught you that level of pride, eh? That's just sick. That God would just... You know, uh, uh, that, that, that he wants you and you know, these people are coming after you, but you're avoiding them to, to stay with the cool people. You know. Mm-hmm. 
You know, in this life I've tried really to reach you. I, I, can, I can die knowing that, uh, that I really put it to you. I drilled you right into the heart with the truth. Now you figure out what you're going to do with it. But if you stay the course you're on, not only are you not valuable, you just don't exist. So you, whatever you say or do, while it might be a temporary kind of thing that passes, every moment of your life is passing and nothing sticks. Nothing really matters. And there's a lot of people that live like that, that nothing really, and they're fine with it. It's the end of the world, I feel fine. Uh, God failed, I reject him. You know, look at the world, it sucks. God could have fixed that, to hell with him. I'd rather live as irrelevant. And, that's, and Satan's coming in saying, you see, Zeph, my logic is very logical. Live as if you never were. Be part of the uh, grateful dead. And, uh, and, and this is God's problem, not yours. In the end, it's bliss. And I'm here to say, well, in the end, it's not bliss. The end doesn't end in death. That's just the beginning. The, the people that die that are conscious of what's next will wish they could be unconscious but won't be able to... In other words, they'll want death, but they don't get it. In death, there is no death. So they'll want death, but... So maybe you need to hear that to know that you... Um, there is no escaping it. Everything, every breath you have, every heartbeat you have, came from Creator. Everything you will ever do in the future was allowed by Creator. You could do not one thing without him that, that had written it, that had allowed it, that created it to happen. Nothing you've done is of your own self-will. Every idea or inspiration you've had is because it was already written that you would have that. The one that writ wrote it is your maker. The idea that you, you're going to avoid all these religions, they're coming after you because you're somehow really precious if God's willing to do what he did in the days of Noah, you know, I wouldn't count on that preciousness so much. That, oh, they're pursuing me, but don't worry, I'm too smart for them. Ah, those who sow to the devil are not smart. That's why they do that. They're not smart at all. They just see that, hey, it works for other people. It's like they are the kind of people that are very much monkey see, monkey do. Their whole life is like monkey see, monkey do. Hey, it works for him. I'm, I'm in, guys. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Another one bites the dust. Welcome, sucker. Now get over there and have your non-life. Here's some drugs to, to tamp it down so you don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, enjoy yourself. Here, go gamble. Here's some money. Now stay out of my way. That's basically it, isn't it? That's intolerable. I couldn't, I, could, I just couldn't, I couldn't handle that. The idea that every, that nothing you do matters. No amount of achievement is really an achievement. It's like in that side of the mirror, it's, there is no reflection. There is no life. But, you know, people don't want to suffer. Yeah, but people that mavericks, they all suffer. I, I'm just not that courageous. <laughs> um, well, then, you know, then you were made to go with your God. Your, your leader is Satan. So go with him. You know, uh, quit trying to pretend. Don't, I wouldn't even bother going to church. If I were in your shoes, I would do anything I wanted to do. I would just live by my belly and by my loins. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, devil horns up all the time. I'd be just running and gunning and having a great old time. It's not my fault everything the world screwed up the way it is. I have no responsibility. I'm, just gonna, I'm here to do what I'm going to do. Do what thou wilt. And maybe you two can wind up like Alistair Crowley, sick and penniless, with no friends and nothing for all. Because, I mean, he was the ultimate, right? Ah, uh, you feeling this yet? The corruption that people like Alex Jones are talking about, it wouldn't even be there unless this 
issue we're not here. This is the primal, primary issue. Who are you? Are you a free man? Are you a slave? Oh, well, look, I'm a slave. You're right, Satan. I'm a slave of God. I'm a bondservant, but I'm also Christ. I'm also the light. I'm also the throne. I'm also all these different things. But it's because that's what reality is. And I'm not going to negate reality by saying I become antimatter is saying that I'm a fool to matter or that I have no fidelity with matter. You can take it all the way to the level of physics if you like. The other thing is the reason there's been no World War III yet, no, and there's still a chance for some kind of repentance because that's what everyone's waiting for. And oh, the controllers, and this is prophetic, the controllers cannot manage the chaos. As I've told you again and again, there will be no new world order, so don't worry about that. What there will be is a horrific chaos that leads to nothing but pain and sorrow. Pain and sorrow. And it's not God's fault at all. There's no fault. I mean, this is, you know, this is just uh, the, the forces of you, Satan, since you're hanging around, not afraid of you. But the forces of you, you're going to get to have your day. Your new world order is pain and suffering and chaos and death. That's what you want, but your followers don't know that. They think you're going to help them build the new Atlantis once again, only to be, like all your other civilizations, buried, all the pyramids buried. Yes, your pyramid, buried, under the ocean, cataclysm. All the past civilizations gone. So here we go again. No, I'm doing pretty well for not being conscious of all the other aspects. Yeah, being limited in the way that I've been limited. But um, let, it, let it play out. Um, when I see the collapse of the economy, mass death and chaos, and all the things that we're seeing, of all the people struggling because they're trying to overthrow the evil oligarchy so they can have their, their seat at the table, and I fully understand that. Meanwhile, being controlled the whole time to put everyone in pain and sorrow and suffering and poverty, especially, so that finally everything could be equalized with the elites playing tennis. Like the, the new movie that's coming out with Jodie Foster uh, and uh, Matt Damon, what is it called, Elysium? There's a utopia where they have. This was, this was, well, Fritz Lang did it first with Metropolis. This is where it's going and the merging to machines. That's what my whole. Death Camp Parade album is merging with machines. It's all about a future where they want to merge with machines, which is another plot, another trick of, very clever, very clever, Mr. Lucifer, another trick, or I should say Ms. and Mrs. and Mr. Lucifer, combination, hermaphrodite Lucifer, whatever. Um, but anyway, it's a trick because... The ultimate end game is temp man with becoming bionic eternal, and in so doing, in the transition, he dies. See what I mean? It's mass extinction. Machines are a mass extinction event, and they're going full tilt toward that, to their own destruction. In other words, they will not be conscious. It, it's, did you ever see that? I love to talk in terms of films and, and music and things because. You know, I can decipher them, and I like to do that. There was a film that was out a while back by Roman Polanski called The Ninth Gate years ago, maybe, maybe 10 years ago now, with Johnny Depp and Frank Langella. Not Frank Langella. Well, yeah, I think it was him. I'm, I'm, you know, it's a little foggy, but basically it was about the guy learning the secret of Satan. And he wanted to get through that ninth gate, and that would give him powers of Lucifer on earth. You know, the power of invincibility, the power of eternal life, or the secret of the ninth gate. And it all had to do with, and all these books on the occult, and they're all Satanists. The whole movie is about Satanists and their pursuit of eternal life through Satan, through the secrets. You know, all the tarot cards and all the ancient thing and all the pentagrams and all the books 
and all the rituals and all the black robes and all the animal and human sacrifices and all the things these people do lead to an absolute zero, lead to their own destruction. And the movie had a moral element to it. In fact, this guy was relentlessly pursuing this secret that he was better than everybody else and he was going to find it. He finally found the secret and the location of the ninth gate and the whole bit. And um, the Johnny Get Depp character happened to be there to witness. He makes a circle of fire with gasoline or whatever. And then he puts his hands over the fire. He goes, yes, although I'm flesh, I can feel nothing. Like, I'm invincible. Look, fire can't hurt me. Elements can't hurt me. And he was just boasting about being ahead of beyond it all. Look, look what I've achieved. So then he goes ahead and to prove it, he pours gasoline all over himself and lights himself on fire. He goes, though I'm in flames, I feel nothing. Well, wait a second, I do feel something. Then he starts screaming. And he basically, as the ultimate fool of fool of fool of fools, the most learned man who had all the books, all the learning, lights himself on fire feeling he's invincible and burns to a crisp. And then, of course, the wily character of Johnny Depp comes in, takes that knowledge, and everything is prophesied in these books, what's going to be the next scene in this little artwork. Then it happens. So, you know, on Satan's side, there's these prophecies, too, because it's outside space and time. And so he finally, there's this witch there, and he finally gets the secret himself to the ninth gate, or whatever, and then, then the story ends. Somebody does get get it, but it's uh, not the one coveting it or whatever, but anyway. No, it didn't renounce the way of Satan. In fact, it was, if anything, Roman Polanski tries to explain it, tries to explain how these elites are operating in Europe and, and elsewhere uh, who are in pursuit, and why people pursue Satan, the, the dark master. Why? Because they feel that he's the one that's figured out the formula against God's limitation and how to beat God, how to crack God. So basically, they follow him, uh, and on the way, they end up running, gunning, and pillaging. Lots of death, murder, coldness, hurting other people, you know, to advance themselves along the path, feeling that doing bad things on the, on the left-handed path will lead to, well, that's what it is. It's the left-handed and right-handed. Right is righteousness, left is Satan, it's always been, I'm not talking about political parties. Uh, well, maybe a little bit, but I mean, in our parties, you have an equal number of Satanists on Democrats and Republicans. There's an, e there's an equal number amount. They're all behind the scenes, go to the same lodges. They're all in the same team. When I say lodges, I mean Masonic lodges are wedded to Lucifer. I, I don't know that. Th that cannot be in dispute because it's in the record. These are facts. There is no dispute with that. People don't like you saying it, but that's, that's obviously the God of, of Freemasonry. You just look at their symbology and you'll see. They want the knowledge too. They want the knowledge of apotheosis to become a divine being and be eternal. Again, it's the same quest. It's just two different ways of going about it. Um... The quest for eternal life for the few, for the few selfish people to leave everyone else out, um, will lead to their destruction. In other words, just like the guy that poured gasoline all over himself, when they make the leap from, from mortal to machine, and these machines, we're talking about bionics, we're talking about super advanced, beyond even where science is now, like by hundreds of years even, stuff you would call magic or impossible. You see beings of light appear, and you don't realize those are machines. They're some, uh, you know, they have an interdimensional quality. There's, you know, they're not just stuck here, but they're, they're, they're locked into a certain frequencies. So they can't go everywhere. Do it. They can't get to the New Jerusalem, for example. They can't have an, uh, the alternate reality, whatever. But they believe this is the way to go, and they're willing to spill blood to get there, figuring that doing the wrong thing is going to bring the right result. So when they make the leap from human to machine or try to transplant their brain or download their consciousness into one of these things, that's the moment they die, their death. And what is the machine is not life and it's not them. Hence, game over. Mass death and mass extinction of humans. 
Then the other thing is to corrupt the human genome through GMO and everything else so that it's not the same creation that Yahweh made. And that includes plants, animals, and humans. And so environmentalists are destroyers of the earth. Right? Chemtrail people, right, geoengineers, are destroying the atmosphere and life on earth um, where if they left it alone, life would flourish. So their purpose is destruction. The military industrial complex of the United States is satanic and its goal is the destruction of all life on earth. That's, I mean, whether it's consciously aware of that or not, that's what will eventuate. The purpose of the leaders is to lead people into slavery. So instead of fighting for freedom in the Constitution of the United States, the purpose of the leaders is to lead people into bondage and emergencies, a constant state of emergency. So I can now predict without hesitation. And, and the, reason, well, the reason this is all held together with spit and glue and whatever, it's because the mighty hand of Yahweh has been on it. Because his people live here too. And he protects us. That's why I was, if I was going to be a Luciferian or Satanist, I want the lambs to flourish so that God won't hurt me. Because I would be smart. You see, that's smart. I'm actually smart. But I can't say the same thing about the elites and the leaders. They're not as smart as me, apparently. Or they would understand that. No. Their goal is to get rid of everything of God, feeling that they would win. If they were to get rid of everything of God and every one of God, and if they were to try to lay a hand on those people or hurt them, they then will be rendered extinct. If there were no people of God here, they would not exist in the first place to complain or to hook up with Satan or anything else. There would be no Satan here either. All would suddenly perish. Because the only reason they're here is they're codependent on the lambs of God existing or they would not breathe even one breath. Now that is absolute truth. Absolute truth. I've never heard that spoken before on the air. I wish you people would speak it yourselves. I wish there was some way to get it out. But no matter how, the fact that this is a public broadcast, that truth will not get out. Um, even after, some truth did. Like I read on a blog somewhere that the, the, the maids run Hollywood. And it was like, ha <laughs> ha, so someone listened into one of my podcasts. Right? Because I was, I was the only one that said that back in the day, years ago. But then I started seeing it on like Above Top Secret and some other blogs. It's like, wow, well, cool. So somebody listened. I should know I was there. Right? I mean, I'm an eyewitness. But, you know, it's amazing how long it takes little bits of truth that people think the elites are running things like, no. The elites are running, the people you think are elite aren't running anything. It's these lowly, like, janitors and some of the, you know, some people understand that. Yeah, be nice to the, the bus service, be nice to the janitors, the waiters, the, the little people. You never know when one of them is going to show up wanting to be in that position to fool the, the world and to fool you, but really having a whole cadre of elite slaves under their, under their control. Oh, I've seen that. Again and again and again. No, they don't want to be rich or elite or anything. They, they're working behind the scenes for their God. They just want, they're dedicated to Satan 1,000%. And I see them when, they, when they're off work. You know, and they're, um, and they're doing this and that. They're getting people married and unmarried. And, and they go into households and, you know, up in, uh, you know, which were big families, and then they work their way in there, they become the maids, and they, they get different people married to each other, create rumors, and pretty soon the family breaks up, and they get, you know what I mean? It's, it's, I've seen this, it's amazing. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world, yeah, well, there's more to it than, than just that, and yeah, there's a lot to all of that. You know, things are not as they seem on this planet. So when you say elites, don't forget that they answer to somebody, and it may not be above them financially or, or with public uh, celebrity. It may be below. In fact, it is. 
let's just put it on the table. That's the way it is. <laughs> He's tricky, Satan. But again, the contest comes down to Satan versus God and the idea that if one becomes uncreated or irrelevant as a result of rebelling against God and, and doing your own thing and getting rid of your conscience because you can't be a good Satanist unless you have no conscience. In other words, cheat people, lie to people, and hurt people, or you ain't going to get ahead. You're not going to go far unless you could do that. Meaning, you know, people die left and right, and you got to have no guilt over that. You knew they were going to die, and then they did. So blood's on your hands. You've got to be able to, like, walk on. Or oh, you're not tough. You're a pussy. See? And then, then, then you, they'll just make you somebody's slave, and then you'll just stay at that position. It's ruthless. It's hard. It's awful. You don't tell them that much, huh? Old buddy Lucy. You don't tell them. You don't tell them that there's more to it than just being a pretty boy or girl and putting out. That there's a little more to it than that. You don't tell them that. Once they get them in across the borderline, and the border, in their parlance, the border always means the border between God and Satan. Whether it's the Steely Dan song, the Eagles, I'm out on the border trying to turn water to wine. It's always, it's always about Jesus and the devil or some kind of thing like that. Crossroads, border, all those kind of words in modern music and poetry are, they're talking symbolically because they can't literally tell you. So they're going to put it in those kind of terms. Which would mean that, um, how my friend put it, he goes, look, they did blood sacrifice for Satan. That's why they're rock stars. He just put it out very clearly. I don't know. I wasn't there. Um, but they learned that there's more to it than just uh, being another pretty face that, uh, that the higher-ups wanted to uh, fornicate with. And all that fornication is... You know, here's the other funny thing. All that fornication is, is, is um, you know, gay, even though they pretend they're not. I mean, that's, that's the way Satan rolls. Everything has to be a rebellion toward God or a, anything that's in the Bible that's forbidden would be, you know, a ritual, right? It would be so funny that um, most of the people that are gay in the world actually become anti-gay publicly or did like preachers and so forth when they're owned and operate but the, I don't know I just always puzzled me it always puzzled me I didn't understand you know how there can be this sort of gay community and then don't they know that everybody else is that has anything going on I mean don't they understand that the whole thing is like that it's, it's these weird divisions in society that kind of freaked me out. I don't understand it. No, it's political, obviously, and for, for dividing of power and for, for, for going more the Luciferian way. And then you have Obama, who must be one of the, one of the stupidest people, I've, I guess, of all time. Be going down this road, thinking that he's going to get somewhere, and it's obvious what road it's on, what's road, what road it is. And somehow he's going to be in his bunker and exempt while he brings chaos to the world. I, I just don't see it. And in the movie last night, had uh, Jamie Foxx was the carbon copy of Obama and how he wanted peace in the Middle East and withdraw all the troops and everything. It's like, no, nah, the guy's he's out there droning away and doing anything but peace. So it's, you know, and then, then he tries to bury it all under this whole gay rights thing. He's the first gay president. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. Everyone's gay. Unless you get delivered out of, out of the world, you're basically everything. You're gay, you're a murderer, you're a liar, you're a cheat, you're a criminal. We're all those things. What the heck is this gay thing? And then someone goes, well, you know, it's not fair, like, you know, with inheritance versus death taxes. If so, you die with your spouse, you're like, oh, it's not. yeah, that's a tax code issue, dude. That's not a, that's a tax code issue. If it were up to me, I would have no affiliation with the state. You want to get married? 
you get married. No benefits for anybody. I would have a flat tax and end all benefits to everybody. There would be equality. Marry your dog if you like. I don't care. Don't put this stupid issue in my... Well, I, I just... Look, it's hard for me to even understand why I'm here. I mean, the things that seem so obvious and easy for me to understand. I go round and round with these people who seem dumber than a bag of hammers, especially the conformed ones. It's like, they just shake their heads at me like I'm stupid. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not stupid. Not at all. Very, I'm very intelligent. And I use my intelligence constantly, because I've had to to survive. That's made me sharper. And nothing changes on this end. There's nothing that you can say to me, or you, Lucifer, can say to me, or you, Satan, can say to me, or you, demons, that can say to me, or you, followers of all that, who can say to me, or you, witches and warlocks and, and maids and gardeners who run things. There's nothing that you can say to me. Any intellectual argument, I will smash it, like I did today, refuting Satan himself with logic. So it comes down to, in the end, you value your selfish creature comforts or not. You don't want to make a sacrifice for other people or for your children. It's just going to come down to whether or not you're selfish. Sorry, I could boil the whole argument down to whether you're selfish or not selfish. That will be what determines what road you take. And we're all selfish, right? So what gives you that extra oomph to get, you know, I think we're all selfish and we struggle not to be. But in the end, it's not about us. Not about us, not about you, and not, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about anything that you think is so precious or not, or your awards, or your status, or your pecking order, or any of that. It's not about us. Not about us! The one thing the human needs to do to grow up in the intergalactic universe is to realize it's not about you. You were given free will, but God already knew what you would choose. So, end of that one. He's not pursuing you. Those idiot evangelists aren't pursuing you. Those Bible thumpers are not pursuing you to make you this anti-homophobic kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, pro-right-wing uh, white person kind of snob or evildoer, or whatever the idiot propaganda is that people believe. They believe it. They are so stupid. God, I hate to call people stupid. I hate to call it stupid. But Lord, if it's not stupid, what would be a better word? Okay, he just gave me a word. Willful. Thank you, Lord. Instead of the word stupid, I'd like to strike that from this entire conversation and say, because it's just my frustration. I don't want to call anyone stupid. Then I know I have very, in, very inspired conversations with people, but I wear them out, you see. I wear them down because, you see, I have the truth, and I'm not going to give up on that. And they're going to go, yeah, but this works. It's like, it works for what? It works in a sewer. It works, there's biological movement. It works to what? I don't get it. It works. What works? Dest destroying the earth for your own selfish, so you can have your little slice of the pie, go ahead and kill all these other people here. That works? I mean, but no, you have to do the logic and do the math, and you can finally you see that's really what it is, in a sense. And uh, the people at the top know that. 
that's why they're so willing to take out people in the United States. They're like, you guys have had it easy all this time. Look at everyone else in the world who's really struggled. We're going to take you people down and teach you to be humble. So that's what's going on now, and God's not going to stop it. Already 55% of the wealth of Americans is gone, and it's not coming back. So they've already been wildly successful in taking Americans out. And now they want to assimilate you to being a creature begging for crumbs. And you people that are in your little apartments and cubicles, you're never getting out of there. No. This is coming down. And um, ultimately, the singularity is death. New world order is death. The pyramid is the way of death. The secrets of the universe are the way of death. Sirius and, uh, and Orion and the intergalactic aspect of all this is also death. How about that? Space travel is death. There's only one way through the door that leads to life. And if you don't take it, then it's okay. God didn't call you. If he did, you would be with him. In the end, it's not in my head. I'm just, he wants me to put this word out. I'm doing it. So with that, I bid you shalom, shalom. Yeah, this is a, maybe I'll just put this up because this seems to encapsulate the whole thing. And with that, I bid you shalom. Bye for now. Zeph Daniel, Zeph Report, Zed Jah, uh, 432, 528, and every other frequency. Uh, until we meet again.